Before I speak this morning, let's ask God's blessing upon his word. Father, we are grateful for your word. I pray now that you will speak to us from your word today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Today I'm going to continue our series on what is the greatest problem facing America today. Of course, we learned already. The greatest problem is lack of faith in God. i give you two reasons why that is the biggest problem facing America. The reason number one is this is God's world. He created it. He is the almighty, in charge, in control God. And the second reason is God makes all the rules. God makes all the rules. Now, that brings us to a question this morning. If God is the almighty, powerful, in control God, and if he makes all the rules, then why do we have so much confusion, so much destruction, so much war, so much violence in our world today? Why does all that happen? If God is, in fact, the creator God in control of everything, and he makes all the rules, then why in the world are we in the shape we're in America today? Why are we almost at the point of self-destructing as a nation? Let me give you the reasons why this morning. First of all, we are facing this problem today because in the beginning, when God created man, he gave to man a free will. When God created man, he gave to him a free will. We can choose whether we want to obey God or not. I remember one church I passed a number of years ago. He had a, a man at a church. He was a, a big man, just a real strong key man. And before he was saved, he had a real problem with drinking and had a violent temper. And even after he was saved, that still came through once in a while. One day we were talking, he said, you know, I just wish God, he took his hand and said, I wish God could just make me do what I'm supposed to do. I said, God's not going to make you do what he's supposed to do, but God will provide the Holy Spirit to enable you to do what you ought to do. And as time went on, as you grew in grace and in love with the Lord, those things did begin to pass in his life. But we're facing this problem today because God has given to us a free will. The second reason is simply this. There is a very real, powerful devil. The devil is not a figment of the imagination. He's not something that you see in movies or some fictitious person. The devil is a very, very real being. Very, very real being. Listen, God's will and God's purpose is to give us life. Jesus said, I'm come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Now listen, the devil's will is to destroy everything and everyone. That's his will. That's his purpose. That is his goal to destroy everything that God has created. You know, after the flood, read about that in, in Genesis. After the flood, in Genesis chapter 8, listen, I want you to hear what God said about mankind. That includes all of us. Here's what he said. Everything they think or imagine is bent toward evil from childhood. That's why God said, all of mankind, even at the time they're a very small child, is bent toward evil. Now, that started way back in the Garden of Eden. I want you to think about this. After man sinned, after Adam sinned, and God faced Adam with that sin, did Adam say, yes, God? I did sin. Did he? No, he didn't. So he said, well, God, it's really your fault. It's that woman you gave me. And all the men said, amen. amen. <laughs> okay. but that, that's what happened. Adam, instead of saying, yes, I did it, and said, no, 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 God, it wasn't me. It was that woman that you gave to me. Let me ask you, I want you to raise your hand this morning. How many of parents ever had to teach your children to lie? Did anyone ever have to teach your children to lie? 
Why do children lie? I mean, you take a child that's very, very small, and you say, did you do that? No, I didn't do that. <laughs> I mean, it just comes naturally. You see, that's part of the human nature, the sin nature. After Adam sinned, the Bible said, we have a sin that we love to sin. We want to sin, and God has given us a free will. We can sin if we want to. You never have to teach your child, child to lie. How many have ever had to teach your children to cheat? I don't think so either. And yet a child will cheat. Well, not only children, adults too. Because that just come, that, that's something that comes naturally. You ever have to teach your, how many of you ever teach your children to steal? <laughs> but children will steal. I mean, little, little children. When they know they're playing with other children, they know that this toy isn't theirs, they'll take it and, and run with it. Did you take that, that toy? No. You see, the human nature is we don't have to teach anyone to lie, steal, or cheat. Here's a big one. How many of you ever had to do this, teach your children to be disobedient? Anybody? That just comes naturally, doesn't it? I mean, not, not just little teeny kids, I mean teenagers and adults. It just comes naturally. It's, it's the thing to do. It's to cover up. <coughs> you see, when you go back to the word of God, all the answers are there. God said in the beginning he created man. God created us with, as a puppet so that we could not do something wrong. We would have to do what God wanted us to do. But God said, no, I want you to obey me because you love me. And I'm going to give you a free will, and you can do whatever you want to do. You can obey me and be blessed, or you can disobey me and suffer the consequences. And since that time all the way through, even till today, we still have that sin nature that we face. So the devil has really has kind of a, an end on us there because he knows we have a, a nature that is bent toward sin. Now, let me ask you this. How does the devil attack a person? You ever thought about it? How does the devil attack a person? Let me tell you. Mainly, 99% of the time, it is through the mind. That's how the devil attacks, through the mind. Listen, every, let's think about it. Every decision you make begins here, in the mind. Everything you do, every action you take, every decision you make, it begins in the mind. And the devil knows that. Now, turn with me to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 15. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 15. I want you to notice what Jesus had to say, beginning at verse 18. Jesus said, but the words you speak come from the heart. That's what defiles you. He's made very plain. Listen. For from the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, all sexual immorality, theft, lying, and slander. Wow. Jesus said, listen, I'm going to tell you, folks, this is where it comes from. It comes from the heart, from the thought. And guess who puts those thoughts there? Not God. The devil. Listen, I told you earlier. The devil's goal, Jesus said, the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. The devil's goal is to destroy everything that God has created. And Jesus said, listen, all these things that you list here come from the mind. The devil puts it. Just go to Mark's gospel. Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7. And let's see what it says here. Mark chapter 7 and verse... Twenty. Find it here. Verse twenty. This is what Jesus said. Then he added, "It is what comes from inside you that defiles you. For within, out of a person's heart, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, 
adultery, greed, wicked, wickedness, deceit, lustful desires, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. Wow, that was a lot. All these vile things come from within. They are what defile you. You see, when you go back to the Word of God, all the answers are here. Why are we facing all the problems in our world today? The Bible tells us. You have, a, you have a nature, a sin nature, and God says you can do what you want to do. You can obey me or disobey me. And the devil says, yeah, and I'm going to put all those evil thoughts in their mind. All these things that come, all the problems we have in our world today, they come because the devil puts these thoughts in their mind. That's what the Scripture has to say. Let's go one more. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. I want you to read that whole chapter. We don't have time, but that whole chapter, uh, Paul talks about why we are in the world and in the shape we're in today. But let's look at just beginning at verse 24. After mankind says, verse 24, So God abandoned them to do whatever shameful things their heart desired. God said, if you want to do it, go ahead. You can do it. Don't want you to, but you can do it. As a result, they did vile and degrading things with each other's bodies. They traded their truth about God for a lie. So they worshiped and served the things God created instead of the creator himself, who is worthy of eternal praise. Amen. That is why God abandoned, listen, God abandoned them to their shameful desire. God said, you want to do it? Go ahead. <coughs> even this, listen, even the women turned against a natural way to have sex and instead engaged in those in sex with each other. Why are we fighting that in our world today? And the men, instead of having normal sexual relations with women, burned with lust for each other. Men did shameful, shameful things with other men and as a result of this sin, they suffer within themselves the penalty they deserve. Now listen. Since they thought it foolish to acknowledge God, they say, we don't want to obey God. We don't even want to admit there is a God. God, he abandoned them to the foolish thinking and let them. He's in control, but he's here. He let them do things that should never be done. Their lives became full of every kind of wickedness, sin, greed, Hate, envy, murder, quarreling, deception, malicious behavior, and gossip. They are backstabbers, haters of God, insolent, proud, and boastful. They invent new ways of sinning, and they disobey their parents. They refuse to understand, break their promises, are heartless, and have no mercy. They know, listen, they know God's justice requires that those who do these things deserve to die, yet they do them anyway. And worse yet, they encourage others to do them too. That's why we're in the shape we're in today. That's why we're facing the problems we have in our world. Is there any reason, when you know this, why, why we are not, why we are facing a world filled with anger and rage and violence and revenge Fear and destruction. It's all here. God said, you can do whatever you want to. I've given you that privilege. But he says, here's what's going to happen. When the devil comes in with his thoughts, now listen, what, what fills your mind every day? What, what fills your mind? Now, if you look what the devil's done, look at television, the kinds of things you see on television. Listen to secular music. Look out into a world, video games, and the human nature unrestrained. You put all that together, that's why we are who we are today. That's why the world's in the shape it's in. We can't blame God and say, God, if there's a God, why are you letting this happen? God said, I'm letting it happen because you're doing it. I've given you the permission to do it, and you're doing it. But he said, listen, if you do that, here's what's going to happen. Here's what's going to happen. And as long as the devil can fill our mind with all the thoughts of evil, that's exactly what's going to happen. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So is he. And if 
we continue down this, this path, it will eventually lead to destruction. Turn with me, if you are to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, look at verse 22. This is what, this is what Jesus said. In fact, unless the time of calamity is shortened, not a single person will survive. No, as man would kill himself. But it will be shortened for the sake of God's chosen ones. Wow. I'm not worried that the world is going to self-destruct. There's enough weaponry, enough power among the nations of the world to completely obliterate this earth. It's not going to happen. God says it's going to get bad. It's going to get so bad, man would destroy himself. But for the elect's sake, for those who have made a commitment to me and love me and serve me, I'll not let it happen. I'm going to come first. Go to First Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. We don't know where that is. That's right at the very end of your Bible. 1 Peter chapter 5, and look at verse 8. Here's, the, here's what it says to Christians. Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your Christian brothers and sisters all over the world are going through the same kind of suffering you are. So Peter says, listen, folks, the devil is very real. It's very real. He disguises it very well because he knows our human nature. Our human nature is we <laughs> want to sin. That's normal. That's natural. And he floods the whole earth with all kinds of things that put your mind in the wrong place. As a man thinketh, so what can be done? What can be turned? Turn to Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4, if you don't know where that is, that's right after the book of Psalms. Proverbs chapter 4. Let's look at verse 23. Here's, the, here's what it says to us. Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Good advice. Guard your heart. Watch what you allow to get into your mind. Because if you let the thing, wrong things get into your mind, you'll start thinking that way, and you start thinking that way, that's what you're going to do. God's word is very clear. We are where we are as a nation and as a world because we have chosen that. And I say we, not God's people, but the world at large have made that choice. Well, let's go back to the book of Psalms, chapter 139. This is something that says to me and to all of us as Christians. Psalm 139 and beginning with verse 23. Here's what David prayed. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Know what's going on in my heart. Teach me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. Wow. That should be the prayer of every Christian. Lord, search my heart. What am I allowing into my heart? What am I allowing to come in and affect the, affect the way I think? Search my heart, O oh God. Point out. If there's something in my life that shouldn't be there, point it out. I want to make it right. We live in a world that's filled with envy, hate, strife, and the devil will try to bring that even into the church. He knows if he can get you thinking the wrong way, he's got you. He's got you. So we understand what's happening with us. I'm going to have more to say about this next week. But the Lord knows <coughs> our heart. And he says, listen, I've given you a choice. You can choose what you want to think. But what you think determines who you are 
so this morning, I guess my, my invitation to you is to ask God to search your heart. If you're not right with God, you know it. If there are things in your life that you need to put out, some fires that need to be destroyed, some things that, that well, I, you know, I've been letting this come into my life. i got to stop that. i got to stop it because it's affecting the way I think and what I'm doing. If you need to make some sort of decision or asking the Lord for prayer or just say, Lord, search my heart. As we sing the last hymn this morning, this is going to be your opportunity just to come and say, Lord, you know my heart. I'm making a choice. I'm bringing it all before you this morning. Amen? Amen. Father, I pray that you will search our hearts today. If there's anything there, Lord, that's not pleasing to you, reveal that to us. We may, may we make that commitment today to be all that you call us to be. Knowing that we live in a world with so many temptations. There is a devil that is so powerful, but our God is even more powerful. So, Lord, search our hearts just now. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. As we, Greg comes to lead us in our closing hymn, if the Lord's revealed some things to you that you need to just kind of bring before him this morning, you feel free to come and we'll pray about it. Let's stand together as we sing. saying, I don't know, I just sense that the Lord may be speaking to others here today, saying, you know, there's some things that you need to bring before me. If so, come on down. That's okay. And we'll pray about it. Let's sing that last verse. know every heart that's here at this altar this morning. You know every need. You know every heart. So, Lord, I pray that even now, even now, Lord, as we pray together, I pray that the Spirit of the living God, the Lord, would just reach down. You're faithful to your word. 
you're faithful to do what you have promised in your word. Lord, you have promised that if we come and bring our knees before you, that you will hear, that you will answer and meet those needs. So, Father, I pray right now for these here at this altar. And I pray that the Spirit of the living God reach down and touch their hearts, meet their needs. Father, we love you today. And I'm so thankful that you do know our hearts, you know our thoughts, you know our deeds. And so, Lord, just now, I pray that there will be a cleansing. I pray today that there may be that, that assurance that you're here and that you do answer. Thank you for giving us that privilege, the privilege that is ours, to trust you. So, Lord, even now, as we brought these knees before you, I know you've met needs that you're promised. And thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. My prayer for you as you go out this way, that you'll watch and guard the things that get into your mind. It will make a difference in your life. God bless you. Have a great week.